Meow. 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 <laughs> you seen kitty cat. Oh, you are cute. All right. It's feeding time, that's why he's being a little more meowy. Getting into that. So, I... Once more, it's late at night. Also, I am wearing a kitty on my shirt. So, um, I wanted to... I was to talk about my favorite D&D characters. I'm finally walking in my living room instead of my bedroom like I have been here. Let's... Get board games in the background. Ha 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 ha. Board games. Yay. Expensive pieces of cardboard. So, um, DD characters. Or role playing characters in general. So, I had asked a couple of days ago what type of characters do you all end up playing? And, or seeing what type of characters from other people's vlogs and so on. Um, I'm really bad at actually standing still. My apologies. Uh, so, the type of characters I tend to play are skill monkeys. So, there. Actually get some light. Uh, now you have reflection of me. Now you can see the camera with reflection of me and the light. and uh, Too much. Find a different spot. So, um... It would be easier if I actually just grabbed my tripod and used it. But, I don't know. I didn't like having the tripod up last time. and Constantly having still images. So... Skill monkeys are the primary thing that I tend to play. So, for most role-playing systems, that is a character that has an above-average number of <clears throat> skill proficiencies. Things that they can do, specifically out of combat, in my case. So, for a 3.x D&D character, or a Pathfinder character, that means rogues and bards, and rangers. But, uh, none of these systems are good with rangers. So, rogues and bards. In 5th edition, it ends up working a bit differently. Uh, actually, my character that I'm currently creating is the first time that I've played a skill monkey in 5th ed. More specifically, I tend to lean toward characters that have high mental stats. Uh, it seems like almost all of my characters have above average intelligence, charisma, and or wisdom. Usually two of the three, not normally all three, although my newest skill monkey definitely has all three. For non-D&D based role playing systems, I tend to go for characters that, for some reason there's something in my eye, that's why I keep trying to rub it. I'm also a little dehydrated. So, um, for non-D&D systems, I tend to play characters with a lot of options. It's the skill monkey situation just in a different context. Um, so, for an example, I had a role-playing character in the system Godlike. It's a system based out of World War II, effectively, where your whole shtick is that you effectively are the first superheroes. Why do I keep saying the word effectively? Anyway, you're the first superheroes, so as a result, you usually have some type of power, something that a normal person doesn't have. There's a couple of specks on the lens. I should fix that. Anyway, um... The character that I played had three separate powers. Not because they were more powerful that way or I was being power gamey, I just like having options. And that's generally what it boils down to in role-playing systems, that I like being able to have something I can do in any situation. It doesn't necessarily need to be the best thing to do in a situation. It doesn't necessarily need to be the right thing to do in any situation. I just want to be able to do something. So, in a combat, for an example, my characters usually have some way to fight in melee and at a range. Not always, but usually I have that way. And if I can't do in melee and at a range, I can do one of those and also assist in some way. Either I can go flank somebody, I can go cast a buff spell, I can do you know, healing, uh, lots of things. Just some way of doing something. I still have to record my Healer's Rock video, but Healer's Rock, um, sorry, there's something 
schmutzed on the touch screen, and I apparently have the focus of something that doesn't have focus hopped up on pixie sticks. Anyway, so my glasses are falling. Just take them off my head. So, um, yeah, skill monkeys. I'm. If I were to do stat based things, again, mental stats tend to be my primary. After mental stats comes some type of an agility or dexterity. And then usually I dump hit points of some variety. So con is my usual dump stat in D&D. Uh, health was my dump stat in UAN. Uh, Perky doesn't really have stats, so it's kind of hard to have a dump stat at that point. But usually things that are physical based, because well, I'm, my personal con is definitely below 10. Uh, it's probably more like 6. So it's kind of a personal experience type of thing. And all of my role-playing characters usually have something in common with me. So, for an example, the character that I specified a couple nights ago, uh, the thing that she's like me about is that she is somebody who believes in the goodness of random people. So, in her mind, if she comes up to a stranger on the street, her first reaction is to immediately believe everything that you say. She can detect lies, not as in the spell, but as in, like, having insight. She's not necessarily awesome at it, but she's significantly better than what her wisdom may be Lyle. Um, Belial? Is that the right word? My brain is just coming up with words at this point. It's rather late at night, and I haven't been sleeping well. Uh, my skill monkey character, who still hasn't been named entirely. I've got a couple of ideas for names, but... I'm going to leave them in the blank for now. My Skill Monkey character is a 5th edition D&D character with 21 separate proficiencies. That would be 11 skill proficiencies, 5 tool proficiencies, 5 language proficiencies. Every 5th edition D&D character starts with at least 2 languages. Uh, my background added 2 more. It was either my background or my um, subclass added two more, and my subclass added the last one. Uh, this skill monkey is a rogue, specifically a mastermind archetype rogue, which masterminds are all about aiding people in, co in and out of combat. They have the ability to use help as a bonus action, so they can help you by allowing your attack to roll at advantage, or help you by having your skill roll at advantage. He also has the abilities of a rogue, so lots of sneaky, stabby, stealthy stuff. And he knows a very large number of things. It's kind of ridiculous. Hence the 11 skill proficiencies. He can do a little bit of everything. Uh, there's only 8 skill proficiencies in the game that he does not have proficiency with. That doesn't mean he can't do them, just that he's not proficient. As a result, though, um, his stats are rather, well, balanced, for lack of a way of phrasing it. So he has three high stats. Um, so we're doing a modification of point by for character creation. So he has three stats of 16 plus, one stat of 13, and then the other two stats are significantly below average. He is not very strong. And he is very weak constitutionally. Uh, Backstory-wise, it makes sense as to why he's that way. But, yeah, my traditional dump stat of con strikes again with my secondary dump stat of strength. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's about it. Tomorrow is going to be a significantly more convoluted vlog. I am going to be working on my secret project and finally recording it. At least that's my plan. That may end up being Sunday instead, and Saturday will be a, a more talky vlog. We'll see. Talk to you later, Internet. And, oh, he seems being cute. Hold on. There's an issue right here. This isn't my room, by the way. So if you're wondering the random stuff, most of it's not mine. Most of it's my housemates. Exactly, I see my housemate's out gaming at the moment, so he's not around, and this is a little more comfortable for me to just kind of talk to you at. So yeah, talk to you later, Internet. Bye!